again, we say good evening to uh, each of you as we uh, are certainly glad that the Lord has allowed us to come together once again to worship and praise His holy name as tonight we will uh, come together for Bible study and we know that uh, the Word of God is a uh, light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. So we greet each of you tonight our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and those who are now logging on to Facebook. We're so glad that you are tuning in with us and we pray that uh, God will uh, bless you tonight in word as well as in deed. Again, we just thank each of you for your presence. We thank God for his continued grace and his mercy uh, as we go forward trying to do what God wants us to do. We know the only way we can do that is to hear the word of God, to do the word of God, to live the word of God, and let God live inside of us. And actually, that's basically what the word of tonight is, uh, as we will come from the book of James, as we prepare to uh, go to our Bible study. Uh, it will come to, from the first chapter of James, chapter, uh, excuse me, verse 19 through 27. First chapter of James, verses 19 through 27. Uh, but before we go forward in our Bible study uh, tonight, uh, of course, we certainly want to go to God in prayer and also hear a, a scripture. Uh, but we know that we're two of us gathered together. God is in our midst. Uh, so we would have uh, Deacon Reed come forward now to uh, read scripture for us, uh, followed by prayer uh, by Deacon Montgomery. Amen. Amen. Tonight's scripture will come from the Brother Reed. Brother Reed. You need to cut it off. Amen. This way. Tonight's scripture will come from the Old Testament of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, and we'll be starting at the first verse. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for thou hard studies destruction, and thou lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge and peace of strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counsel there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He open not his mouth in the gate. He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. May we pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, in Jesus Christ's name, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we humble ourselves. Realize, the Lord, this is one more opportunity you have given us to communicate with you. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the shut in, the homeless, the downhearted, the depressed, those who are locked up in the jail, those in the mental institutions, and those in the nursing. We pray, Lord, for the homeless people, Lord. And there's so many things that we could ask you for, Lord, but the one thing that we need to ask you for is to thank you so much, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your kindness. Even though things seem the way they are, we know you have control over everything. Yes, Lord. And we understand, Lord, that we just on a journey. This is truly not our home. We're privileged in a foreign land. We pray for those, Lord, that you have a mission tonight to teach your word, special prayer for our past and all those who come forward this day. We also pray, Lord, that each and every day that you give us, that we draw close to you in some form and fashion, be it a reading to your word and be love, show love and kindness toward each other, Lord. We live in some perilous times, Lord. We live in some difficult time, but we're going to hold on to your unchanging hand, Lord, and lead and guide us through this. Like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, may we 
Lead not to our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all our ways to lead and direct our path, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Thank you for Jesus Christ as a Savior. Thank you for the Holy Spirit as a comforter. We say these things by the aid of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Deacon Reed and Deacon Montgomery for leading us in scripture and in prayer. Uh, we know God. When two or three are gathered together, he is in our midst. And certainly, again, we are glad for your presence. And we are glad for the presence of those who are joining with us on Facebook. Uh, and all those who will uh, take the time to watch this uh, broadcast a little bit later. Again, as we uh, bring the word from the Lord tonight, our uh, background scripture will come from the book of James, chapter uh, number one, verses 20, uh, excuse me, 19 through uh, 27. You know, so often in our uh, lives as we uh, begin to study the word of God, one of the things that we as believers fail to do so often is just sit and listen for God's direction. Very hard for us to do that. You know, some of us would, uh, may use the word patience, uh, waiting on God. Some of us uh, may say, uh, my faith gets a little uh, before me and I try to outrun God. But one thing we certainly need to learn to do in our lives is just sit down sometimes and listen to God. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, as we reflect in our own lives or as we uh, reminisce on things in our lives or we think about things and ponder things we often just sit there in our silence we may be talking to ourselves but it's silence and, and just trying to work things out in our minds uh and certainly trying to tell ourselves or encourage ourselves uh, this is the way i need to go i need to wait on god or uh, i need to uh, get this in order i need to stop doing this or put this in its proper place but oftentimes we fail to pause and just sit down and listen uh, you often hear me say in the ports of prayer uh, as we pray to god there's certain things we ought to do uh, in all of our prayers every time we pray and that of course is acknowledge god confess our sins give god things and the last part is supplication and supplication means to meditate uh, or to sit and wait and as tonight as we hear james talk uh, to the church as he begins to uh, instruct the church in the ways of the Lord, uh, in the ways of godly living, James instructs us that we have to be not only uh, hearers of the word, but we must be doers of the word. And sometimes that's hard to translate in our lives uh, from the point of hearing to the point of doing. And many of us, if we look at our own lives, we may say, man, I'm really good at this part uh, of Christianity, but I'm kind of bad at this part of Christianity, or my religion is very strong in this part, but over here I'm uh, a little bit weak. You know, in order for us to mesh all of that together, we must wait on God. We must allow the Holy Spirit to direct us, uh, because that, the Holy Spirit is what teaches us or, uh, or brings to our understanding the Word of God. Without the Holy Spirit's help, we can read but we'll never truly understand. That's why the word says that the word of God is not for fools. It's only for those who trust and believe in God. So as godly children, as people of God, we must uh, learn to allow God's word to speak to us. And, and in allowing God's word to speak to us, we must allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives. Let us have a quick word of prayer before we go forth. Gracious God, our Father, we just thank you again for this time of worship uh, and Bible study. We pray, God, knowing that you are already in our witness. We just pray that you would open up the avenues of our hearts and our minds. Speak to us, speak through us, that we may teach and preach your uncompromising gospel. That it may lift up those who are bowed down and mend those that are troubled. God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. In Jesus' name we ask you to pray. Amen. 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 So if everyone has found James chapter 1, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and read that in our uh, hearing uh, for those who uh, may be with us on Facebook. Uh, we pray that you have your Bibles uh, with you. And uh, for the sense of understanding tonight, 
I'm gonna actually break with my tradition and read the New Living Translation of this uh, uh, text, okay? All right, and it reads, uh, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it is the power to save souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and do not forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God and the Father means caring for orphans, widows, and their distress, and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. Amen. So the first thought tonight is, who truly learns something, takes the time to learn something, and then just throw it, throw it away? Just regard it. Put it out like it's trash. How many times in our lives did we say we wanted to accomplish something, we took the time out to learn what it is we needed to learn to, to master it, that only once we learned it, we mastered it, we just said it's not for us. Anybody ever wasted their time doing that? <laughs> Brother Jay's laughing. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure all of us have. At some point we say we want to go this direction, only to find out when we did what it takes to, to make it, we just simply learned that it wasn't for us. You know, so often times in our lives, uh, we do that with God. We say, God, you know, I think uh, I want to do this, and I think I want to work over here, and I think I want to uh, be in this ministry, and we get in that ministry, or, or we start this uh, uh, ministry for God, and as soon as we get into it, we like kind of push it to the side. So oftentimes we do that because we're not living in the place God wants us. Yeah, so many times we come up with things that we want to do on God's behalf instead of allowing God to say, this is what I want you to do on my behalf. We come out and we see, oh, Brother Jay is so good with that. I like Jay. I'm going, I'm going to help Jay do this. But we don't understand, first of all, because we don't know what our gift is, that we can't benefit the kingdom of God. The only way we can learn to benefit the kingdom of God or become what God wants us to be is, first of all, we must hear the word of God. We can, hearing the word of God means it is, in, as uh, James uh, points out, it is engrafted into our hearts. We know in the biblical uh, uh, teachings, the heart is the seat of our consciousness. The heart is what leads humans to do the correct thing uh, in within our uh, anatomy. You remember back in the biblical days, if you went back to the Old Testament, they thought uh, the sea of emotions came from their bowels, the, the inward parts, until we found out uh, later on that Christ said, no, uh, it's what's in our hearts uh, that determines what a man will do. If we heard the thing, so as a man, so as so shall he reap. In other words, is what God has placed in our hearts or what we have taken the time to place in our lives, God begins to use it for his uh, benefit. If we don't read the word of God, if we don't pray, and certainly if we're not led by the Holy Spirit, we will never become doers of God's word. We will only be hearers. How many times have you been to church service, Bible study, and you hear somebody say, Oh, I didn't get much out of that today. Or how many times have you read the word to yourself and like, hmm, I didn't really understand that. 
or hmm, I, that didn't really speak to me. It, it's not because God's word is ineffective. It's because what the word was saying to us, either we didn't allow God to speak to us through the Holy Spirit, or we picked it up and says, oh, that sounded good to Brother Bram. Maybe I'll apply that to my life. When, yes, it is very important, but what you need in your life may not be that very verse that you picked up from Brother Jay today. You see, I don't believe that what we need, God always provides. And that is even in his word. So many of us, when we study the word of God, uh, we want to study in a way uh, that we say, oh, today I'm going to study the book of James, or today I'm going to study Revelations, or today I'm going to study Malachi. I'm a believer that when we study the word of God, what God wants us to see, God will allow us to see. Oftentimes, unless I have to study for something specific, I will just flip the Bible open and God begins to speak to me. I believe that is how we as children of God ought to study the Word of God unless we are studying for something specific. That is allowing God to speak to us. How many times have you ever grabbed your Bible, and I don't know if I just get used to my Bible, but I can grab my Bible and say, uh, I want to turn to the book of Leviticus. My hand can literally touch my Bible and turn to the book of Leviticus. I don't have to go searching. And if I do, it, and sometimes it's unbelievable. When I'm at home and I'm studying to preach the word of God or teach the word of God, and God is giving me these scriptures, my hand can literally turn to that very scripture. It is not because of me. Don't get that wrong. It's because of uh, uh, taking the time to study God's word. God would almost put you exactly where you need to be if you listen to him. And that's what James is trying to teach us. How many of y'all know that the book of James was actually the first book written in the Old Testament? We always talk about the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because they're in the first place we often will associate that with being the first books written in the Old uh, New Testament. But James was actually the first book of instruction written to the church in the Old Testament. James wrote the book of uh, James to encourage and instruct those Christians who have been persecuted and spread all across the land because of their belief in Christ. Because they were truly trying to live for God. And James said, guess what guys, I know you're trying to hold on. I know the storm is raging. I know you've been persecuted. I know there's people out trying to do you harm. But I need you to understand that you can't be just a hearer of God's word. You must be a doer of God's word. And sometimes being a doer of God's word seems like it puts us in harm's way. But we have to understand that, that God is a fence all around us. He's a hedge of protection. And when we are truly trying to do the word of God or live the word of God, God is not going to allow anything to be put on us that God can't control or God can't handle Sometimes, yes, that does mean laying down your life. Because those were, it was those that were living in James' time that actually died for the cause of Christ. It was some that were locked up because they choose to serve Christ. That's doing or becoming a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. So many saints of God want all the benefits of God. So many saints of God just want God to rain down, open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that what they say have not room enough to see. Can God do that? Certainly. But why should God do that if we're not trying to do be doers of the word? You notice I'm going to go jump down to the end of this uh, 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 scripture text. James says you must bless the widows and the orphans. You must take care of them. Godly living requires us to put others first, past or beyond ourselves. If we only live for ourselves, if we only want to benefit our own lives and not bless Brother uh, James, you know, you know, Brother James been struggling. You know, it, he fell on hard times. He lost his job. He got laid off. We have many of our brothers and sisters finding themselves in that very situation with this pandemic, and yet we don't help them as God requires us to help. 
We say, oh, they'll make it through. Oh, I'm going to pray for them. But sometimes we got to take out of our cabinets. Sometimes we got to take out of our back pockets and our per uh, purses and pocketbooks to do and to help our brothers and sisters. That's becoming a doer of the word and not just a hero. We must take others' uh, account uh, or way of account into our lives. James in his writings gives us a roadmap to uh, uh, allow godly living. If y'all had to describe godly living, how would you describe it? Did you say that again, brother? You said living out uh, true religion? That, that's a good answer. So, but somebody put that into practical terms. Uh, or, or, yes, I, and that's very practical. True religion is what? Helping orphans and widows. And, and I know James is saying orphans and widows, and we must point out that James is talking about orphans and widows because we know they were the most uh, marginalized uh, in that day and time. If the woman's lost her, if the woman lost her husband, oftentimes she was put out of her home. She didn't own anything, even though her husband may have had fields as far as you can see. If he died and did not have a brother or, or a close relative to take over, that which she had was gone. And, and if she didn't have an older uh, a son who was the oldest to pass that on, she became a, a, a in a very bad way. And it was up for the church to take care of. But God set that up even way back in the uh, book of Leviticus. You know, in, or when you take the, the book of Ruth into uh, perspective, you know, yeah, she, her and Naomi and uh, sister got up and they followed them. And they basically ran out of food. But God has set up for them to go glean at the end, edges of the field. God takes care of those whom... He loves. And, and so God set up for the edges of the field to be left alone. And even if you was cutting a stalk and you dropped it on the ground, God said, leave it on the ground and, and allow somebody that's hungry to, to come and pick it up. But oftentimes, we, uh, we in, instead of blessing people with our extras or, or with God or with our abundance, we tend to either hoard it or refuse to let somebody use it. We just discard it. But people can be blessed with those things that we do not want. When it comes to biblical success, when it comes to success to, for godly living, our faith has a lot to do with that success. But unless we understand the word of God, our faith will be very minimal. How many of y'all understand today that without faith it's impossible to please God? Everybody, right? With the faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But through our faith, we know faith is an action word. We must put into practice that which we preach. If we don't live the words that come out of our, out of our mouths, what did James say we are? Huh? He said we got to be hearers of the word, not, not only hearers of the word, but be doers. But he said if we don't practice what we preach, we are what? Fooling ourselves. Yeah. Do we understand that the God does, is no respecter of person? God does not look at what we present to others and say that's good enough. God looks at our hearts and he said, guess what? I know the real you. you James said you go look in that mirror. You turn around, you walk away, and you forget what you look like. How many of y'all went getting ready to go? You know you get on your Sunday's best, as they say. You get sugar shot. You know you looking good. You look in the mirror, you say, whoo, that's me. You just looking all proud. You start smiling because you think, man, I'm looking good right now. And then you walk out of the house and forget what you got on. Have you ever did that? <laughs> Certainly not. You took the time to do what? Get ready. Get ready. Yeah. Put on your best, yeah. comb your hair, just do all it takes to look your best. I hope we do that and then go out and waddle in the mud. Nobody, right? Wouldn't that be considered ludicrous, foolish? Yes. 
That's what James is trying to get us to understand tonight. Who wants to go get the best God has to offer and then turn around and forget his benefits? Who wants to just have a little bit of God's blessing and not all of God's blessing? So James said, in order to be a doer of the word, we must allow the word of God to be a road map for our success. Only what we do for God, what? We'll last. Only what we do for Christ will last. And when we live for God, when we do what God wants us to do, sometimes it allows, we have to get out of our comfort zones. Sometimes we have to do things that we may not feel that we're good at. But we can't worry about what we're good at. We must go on the strength of God. And, and so oftentimes, we, you know, we make the excuse, well, I ain't not going to do that because... Uh, I don't think the microphone is set up good for my voice today or, uh, or you know, that uh, piano player, he's not really hitting the right key today. I'm not going to get up there and make no fool out of myself. Or, or sometimes you get up, you know, I use myself for uh, an example. You're like, man, I, I, I know I studied, I know I prepared, but that sermon just didn't come out right. <laughs> but oftentimes, when we think we do our worst is when we actually do our best. All right. This is crazy because the world thinks if I put on a show, then I did my best. But God says if you rely on me, you actually do your best. And what that is, is oftentimes when I think I do my worst, people say, man, you really preach today. And I'm thinking, are you crazy? <laughs> did you hear that? That is not what God, that's not how I prepare. Yeah. And so oftentimes when we do that, we we basically put a stronghold on God. We, we put a, a chokehold on God and we don't allow God to use us. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to, to flourish in what we are doing. We put too much of ourselves in God's business. Mm -hmm. and, and James says we can't do that. We must be not only hearers of the word, we must be doers of the word. And, and it's so funny that I can prepare it. And, and y'all know I, I jealously take my time to study Anytime I have to get up in front of anybody, I will not get up and shoot from the hip, as they say. If I am not prepared to teach, I'm going to allow somebody else to do it. If I don't have time, which that truly doesn't happen, but if it was a point that I know that I did not have time to prepare, or I know I'm not going to have time to prepare, just give you this giving a prime example. We've been doing a lot of funerals over the last few weeks, so, and, and then in order for our church to be benefit, I said, guess what? Instead of putting myself too far apart or, or stretching myself too thin, let me allow the deacons to help us. And we got blessed by each one of the deacons that taught every Wednesday, amen, right? Because in order for us to be effective, we must listen to God. I had to listen to God. He said, guess what? You can try to do it all by yourself, but guess what? You're going to become ineffective. Because you can't devote the time you need to do all that you have to do. And see, that's why it's so important for the body of believers to be tightly and fitly put together. That's what Christ said he did for us. That's what we was talking about on Sunday. The body of Christ is tightly fit together. That means each of us have to do our reports. And when we trust in the Word of God, when we allow God to use us through the leading of His Holy Spirit and through the Word of God, God says, then we become what God wants us to be, the body of Christ. It, you, you heard that uh, Paul often tell, he said, we, there's no great members. Uh, we all members of the household of faith. There's no gift better than another gift. We all play our part to do what God wants us to do. And how great we could be as a church, as a body of Christ, if we truly begin to not just hear that, but begin to do that. So when you think about John, John says, if we only listen, if we only listen when a person told us to calm down. Now, you know, in the beginning, John, uh, excuse me, James says we have to be uh, slow to anger, mm -hmm. slow to speak. But so many times in our lives, we don't do that. We certainly talk more than we listen. And we often get angry when we should be able to just let it go. 
How many times you ever heard somebody say calm down and every time they say calm down you got mad? Uh, 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 uh. They say calm down and you just get mad. They say don't be using their words and you just start using more words. Did, did, did that ever happen? Yeah. We let our anger control our emotions instead of our emotions controlling our anger. Amen. They say stop cussing, you spell out more cuss words. They say stop using that verbal language, you use more words. You come up with words that ain't never been spoken before. Amen. Because we let our anger overtake our emotions instead of the other way around. And James said we can't do that because if we live or present ourselves as the world presents themselves, who's going to know the difference? Amen. We look just like the world, and we never go around like a peacock holding our chest out as if we're better than somebody else. But there has to be some kind of distinguishing mark between us and those who live in the world. We understand that we've been saved, we've been purchased, Christ died for us, he shed his blood. And since he shed his blood, since he died for us, since we are purchased, since we have been adopted, since we have been predestined, and all the things that the scriptures say that we are in Christ, we must be. In order for us to live like it, we must do what God's word says. Too many of us have uh, stand our ground instead of allowing this situation to pass. But you know, we got this law out now, stand your ground. Stay in your ground. And people are taking advantage of, especially those that live in Florida. Stay in your ground. Just because somebody look at you wrong don't mean you can pull your gun out and shoot them. They walk past you too, uh, toward you too fast, you just pull out your gun and shoot them. That's crazy. Whatever law person made that law or thought that law, I can't believe they're a child of God. Because there's no way in the world. God says if a man hits you on one cheek, he says do what? Turn the other cheek to him. If they ask you to go one mile, he says go two. If they ask for your coat, he said give them your hat too. Things that believers must do are not the things that the world does. The world doesn't understand that when somebody tramples on you, you just pick yourself up. You don't complain. You don't uh, You don't give them wrath back. But you believe in the word of God. You say, guess what? The man that I serve, Christ Jesus, the one that laid down his life for me, do you know what he went through? He was talking about. Yeah. They was always contesting him. Prove you are who you say you are. That's how they treat us. You say you're a believer. Let me test you. You know how people do us. They want to get on your nerve. They call you out of your name. They misuse you because they want to see if you're going to do exactly what you're supposed to do. And sometimes we're good at doing it, and then sometimes we fail. I'm a firm believer that if you back a person into a corner, at some point they're going to come out and fight. Don't back me into no corner. I know who I am. I know I've been saved. I know I'm redeemed. But if you put me in a certain position, there's no telling how I might react. And that's, that's for any of us. I like to think that I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. But at some point in my life, if you put me in certain situations, I may fail. So we ought not tempt one another, amen? amen. The, the, God doesn't tempt us, but we like to say, guess what, God did this to me, God did that to me. No, God doesn't tempt us because God cannot be tempted. And since God does not tempt us, and God is not going to put us in a situation to say, guess what, let me see if what, if what you read today, you can stand on it. Let me see if it spoke to you. Let me see if it resonated in your life. Let me put you in this situation to see if you can stand. God doesn't do us like that because guess what? God knows at any given point in time, we can fail. And since we can fail, God is not going to put us in a position for us to fail. God's going to put us in a position to be successful. But the only way God can put us in a position to be successful is for us to allow God to use us for his glory. That's what James is talking about. He says, I understand that, that sometimes you uh, are put in situations. I understand, church, you've been persecuted. I understand they're trying to take your life. But when your life reflects Christ, you can't retaliate as the world retaliates. You may want to. And I understand sometimes it may be hard for you to turn the other cheek. 
I may, I understand sometimes it may be hard for you to turn around and walk the other way. Sometimes it's hard for a Christian for us to be the bigger person. And I understand that. Because sometimes people truly want to test us because we say we believe. They don't want to see if you're going to walk away. But why do they do us that way? Who are they really trying to persecute? Who are they really trying to push down? We have to understand that when people try to back us into a corner, it's not truly you they're trying to back into the corner. People are often jealous when we live right. Notice I said when we live right. Not when we just plan. Not when we uh, just hear us of the word, but when we're doing the word. People get jealous. They call us goody two shoes. Oh, you, you, you holier than thou. They, they say all kind of things to us. But truly what they're saying is, I see God living in you, and since you don't look like me, I'm going to attack you. Since you don't look like me, I'm going to push you down. Since you don't look like me, I'm going to talk about you. But guess what? That's okay. Because that means we're doing what God wants us to do. That means we're living the way God wants us to live. How often have relationships because we let our anger get the best of us? Anybody in here ever, out here today ever had to go say, I'm sorry? All of us. I'm going to raise both my hands. How many of you ever did something you say, I know I shouldn't have did that? How many of you ever said something you're like, man, I knew I shouldn't have said that? If I would only thought but one second, if I just would have said, took a deep breath. <laughs> Count to ten. There you go. Remember the teacher used to say, you get mad, snap a pencil, do something, but just don't act out. But if what it's saying is if we could have just thought for one second, the action that we caused would not have happened. And that's what James is trying to tell them. Oftentimes, we let our anger stand in the way. How many of us have been hurt or harmed by somebody and we still haven't forgiven them? It's okay to say it's me because truthfully, it is. It's okay because it happens to the best of us. Like I said, what's that, brother? Yeah, yeah, we have to learn how to forgive. And, and sometimes we have to, even though we may have learned how to forgive, sometimes we simply don't want to forgive because we don't want to forgive. We refuse. We know God says, guess what, let it go. We know God says, it's okay. You know we, God says, I've already took you past that situation. God says, I've already healed you. I've already made a way. But yet we refuse to hear the word of God. We refuse to let God speak to us. We refuse to let God heal us. You said that happened with a pastor. Uh-huh. It is. It, you know, oftentimes, in, 
as, as people of God, we think everything ought to, unfortunately, go our way. If we're not doing what God wants us to do, then oftentimes we're going to fail. If we're not doing it the way God wants us to do, we're going to fail. And if we don't fail, then at the very least it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be contentious. It's going to be a dog fight. And that's unfortunately how too many churches are today. It's a competition. It's the pastor against the congregation. The congregation against the And I'm not always going to, and I won't sit here and, and lead you to believe that it's always the church's fault. Because it's not. Sometimes God allows us to get in places and we begin to think too much of ourselves. We become authoritarian. That's not what God wants us to do. If I can't pick you up in love, if I can't speak kindly to you, if I can't help you in your time of need, what benefit am I to you? It goes beyond preaching and teaching the word of God. Like James is saying, we must be doers and not just hearers. If I can only get up in on Sunday mornings and condemn you and say hell and preach hell and brimstone uh, sermons and call you just a sinner and you did this and you did that, how much would that benefit your life? Now I was telling, talking to Mitch on Sunday and, and I told Mitch, I said, one thing God spoke to me about, he said, I know you love to teach, but start preaching a little bit more. I had because I understand as God's people, and, and Mr. said, Rev, I'm glad you're doing that because, you know, sometimes we've just been beat up all week. We need you to tell us and, and lift us up. He said, I come to church on Wednesday, you can teach me the Bible. I said, it makes a lot of sense, Mitch. Because that is how God's word is. We have to adapt. We must be willing to listen to God and allow God to lead us in the direction that he needs us to go. When you talk about godly living, godly living honors God. Godly living points back to what Christ did for us on the cross of Christ. Uh, excuse me, at the uh, cross, of, cross of Calvary. What Jesus does, our lives are always ought to point back to that sacrifice that he made. Godly living produces godly living. Godly thinking produces godly living. When we think like God, then we begin to act like God. When we hear God, we begin to talk like God. And when we begin to talk like God, people see our actions, and guess what? They say, yeah, you may seem like you're holier than now, but sooner or later, they're going to they gonna say, oh, no, you are all right. You man, I'm sorry for the way I used to treat you. I'm sorry for the way I used to talk to you. And guess what? If they never come to that turn, it's okay, too. Because guess what? You have done what God required you to do. And as James said, when we live godly, God blesses those who live for him. If we truly want to be a blessed, uh, blessed person, we must be a blessing to God. All right. And when we become a blessing to God, that God truly blesses us. And like you often hear me say, that doesn't mean you're going to get uh, uh, tangible things. It doesn't mean you're going to get something that you be able to hold in your hand. Yeah, your bank ground may grow a little bit, but that's not what we're talking about. When you understand that God gets you through everything, God uh, allows us to be successful in everything, God gives us peace that surpasses all understanding, that we can lay down our heads on our pillars at night, no matter what took place throughout the day. It could have been hell broke out in our lives, and we say, guess what? It's just all right with me because the God I serve is bigger than all of my problems. Because we are not only hearers of the word, we become doers of the word. We can't tell somebody to hold on in your storm and then go and cry because we're going through a storm. If we see our children, we can't tell our children, you know, go and do your best and then something breaks down in our lives and we just lose it. How can we teach them if we're not doing it ourselves? How can we teach our grandchildren? How can we teach our neighbors if we're not doing it ourselves? James said we have to... Uh, live for God. So when we live for God, 
is a few things that we must understand. True godly living produces godly thoughts. In order for us to have godly thoughts and live a godly life, we must do what Romans 12 wants it. We must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How many of y'all know Romans 12 and 12 ought to be the badge of honor for every believer? If we don't, if you go to our brothers and sisters uh, church, one thing they teach, and when I say that, I mean our uh, white congregations. If you go to a white congregation, one thing they will embed on you is, yes, Jesus died for you. That is the most important thing. But you must live a transformed life because he died for you. In other words, we can't live the way we used to do. We can't talk the way we used to talk. We can't treat people the way we used to. That's what James is talking about, being the, uh, uh, a doer of the word and not just a hearer. We must live transformed lives. And the only way we can live transformed lives is by the renewing of our minds. In other words, God has to change all of us and not some of us. We must be willing to give God all of us and not some of us in order for that transformation to take place. All of us can probably look at some aspect of our lives, some area of our life, and say, I truly need to give that to God. All of us, including me. All of us can probably say, I could spend five, ten more minutes in the Word of God every day. All of us could probably say, I could pray just a little bit more than I've been praying. All of us can say, mm, I can help somebody else just a little bit more than I've been doing. And uh, understand this, when I say help somebody, it's not always reaching in your pocket and giving them money. Sometimes you look down the street and it's a person that can't cut their grass. Sometimes you look down the street and it's a person that can't carry their groceries in the house. We just, we must be to people what they can't be to themselves. We must do for people what they can't do for themselves. That's being a true child of God. That's what Christ did for us. He did, for some, did something for all of us that we could not do for ourselves. Sin stood up our way, in our way from having a good in right relationship with God. But he healed that by giving his life on the cross of Calvary. He did something that neither, none of us could do. None of our sacrifices were good enough. Even today, nothing that we do is truly good enough other than living for God. And when we live for God, then God begins to bless us. We understand that anger does not produce godly living. And since anger does not produce God in living, we ought to be what? Slow? Slow to anger. Slow to wrath. What is wrath? Not just fighting. That's what most people translate that word into. It's not just physical fighting. Wrath is condemning somebody. Wrath is pushing someone down. Wrath is stepping on somebody. Wrath is malice, envy, hatred. And when we live like that, we can't say we live for God. If we don't, the Bible says what? If we don't love one another, that's, he said a new commandment I give you that you are love one another. It takes godly wisdom for us to live a godly life. And to live a godly life, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to live in each of us. At our redemption, at the day we were saved, God gave us his Holy Spirit. Oftentimes in our lives, we push it out of the way. We think it's like a, a dirty sock. We just discard. We act like it's trash and we get rid of it. None of us will ever be able to do, produce godly living if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives. 
It's hard to understand when you don't trust in God. But when you trust in God, it's easy for us to give God all that we got, all that we have, so that we not only benefit our church, our brothers and our sisters, our families, but we begin to benefit the world. I understand Jay is my brother in Christ. I understand Brother Brown is my brother in Christ. But truly, what is it that I can give them? None. Because we're all headed in the same direction. I can give you love, yes. I can pray for you, yes. I can teach you the word of God, yes. But truly, as believers, what do we give one another? Support. We have to benefit the world more than we benefit each other. Now, with that being said, we never let those of the household of faith be forsaken. If we don't have anything to give, we always give to those who are the household of faith first. Some of our churches have taken it and turned it around today. They stop giving unless you go to the church. But that's not what God requires. He said if you have little and there is a member of the household of faith that requires our help, we certainly help them first. And then what we have left over, we bless the world with. So God and living, we have to put on, take off some things and put on some things. We got to take off the world, the aspects of life, and put on the godly aspects of life. Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody got any questions, comments? Anything they want to add? God and living requires us to live for God and us and God to lead us through us. Go ahead, brother. Brother, I'm going to go to the scripture. God bless you, 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 we want everybody to be blessed, but truly, those who do the word of God. You can say we, uh, uh, we're a little impartial. Yes, we are. Because that's what God says. God is saying it's okay for us to be impartial when somebody's trying to live for Christ. When we support each other in Christ, we'll be strong together. And not in the people. Amen? Amen. 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 So we'll close with that. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we thank you again for this day. We thank you, God, for your many blessings. And we pray, Father God, that we will become the doers of your word and not only hearers. And we pray, Father God, where we fall short of doing your blessed will, that you will strengthen us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray, oh God, for our church, that you would be what you would have her to be. We pray, God, that we learn to work together uh, to benefit this field of labor, to bless those who cannot bless themselves, to teach and to preach the word of God. We pray, Father God, for all those who say pray for me. And we certainly are so thankful for your grace and your tender mercy. We pray, God, for all those who say pray for me. Bless now your uh, believers as we will leave this place. God, we pray that we will never leave your presence. Forgive us of our many sins and our shortcomings. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 We'll see you guys on uh, this coming Sunday. Those who have joined us live on Facebook, again, we are glad for your presence. And we pray that you would uh, come out on Wednesdays and certainly on Sunday mornings and join us. Uh, if you need us, we are here for you. We love you and we say good night to each of you. Amen. Amen. Amen.